Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and another video. Recently I put up a poll on my community tab asking what video you'd like to see next. So today we're doing an art haul video and I'll be swatching out a few of the new paints I've bought too. I'm really excited for this one as I've been holding off opening parcels and trying out new supplies so we could go through them together. So I really hope you enjoy the video. Before we get stuck in though, I just want to say a quick but very big thank you to each and every one of you who has supported my channel and helped us to grow to over 10,000 subscribers. It's been a tough year for all of us in one way or another and I just wanted to thank you all for taking time out of your busy schedules to like, watch and comment on my videos. It really does mean a lot to me and has really helped me to keep going through some challenging times and I hope in some small way my videos might have helped you too. So without further ado, let's grab a cuppa and take a look at what we've got. I have ordered from a few different places this time, but I'll put all the details in the description box below this video if you want to go and check those out. These are all things that I've bought myself with my own money, so this video is not sponsored. So the first thing I have is this rather large white enamel tray that I got from Amazon for just over £18. I've seen other artists use these trays as mixing palettes for watercolours and I thought it would be really useful to have for mixing larger amounts of paint or if I want to use larger paintbrushes. I typically paint on quite a small scale and use the fold out part of my watercolour tin or my small porcelain palette for mixing but I'd really like to try doing some bigger paintings that will give me a bit more scope for experimentation so I really think this will help. Having a larger mixing space will also mean I won't have to clean it so much between paintings and waste paint, which is also always a good thing. Next I have some more washi tapes. I was looking to get some more of just the narrow size to use in my small etcher sketchbook, but while scrolling through Amazon I found this set of 18 rolls instead, which has 9 narrow rolls as well as 9 of the regular size, and I think I paid just over £6 for all of them. I don't know what sort of quality they'll be and I will have to test them out before trying them on a painting, but I did love the pretty floral designs with the bits of gold in them and thought they were worth a try. They'd also add a bit of sparkle to a bullet journal or diary if you're into that. Paper next and to do bigger paintings I bought a larger size block of watercolour paper. I've tried several different papers on this channel recently, but have gone back to Archers this time as I found it the best for holding up to multiple layers of water and paint. This cold press paper is on a block, so it's glued on all four sides, and that will help to prevent or minimise buckling and warping. Blocks aren't for everyone, especially if you don't mind stretching your paper before painting, and they do tend to be more expensive than sheets or pads but they can also save you a lot of time or effort if you are not into stretching your paper before painting, so for me it's worth that extra cost. I bought this from Jackson's this time and for this 20 sheet block of £140 paper I paid £39.60. This is 100% cotton paper and each sheet is 12 by 16 inches in size. It was cheaper than Amazon at the time so it's always worth shopping around. The next thing I've bought is this Pro Art Strathmore Mixed Media Art Journal from their 500 series. It has a hardback cover, is acid free and contains 64 sheets of 100% cotton paper. It's quite different from my current Etcher sketchbook which I still love and will continue to buy, but my aim for the Strathmore sketchbook is to use it more to plan out paintings and use with different mediums. I want to try not to worry so much about keeping it really neat, as sometimes that can feel limiting and restrictive. It's easier said than done when you're a bit of a perfectionist, but that's my aim, so we'll see how it goes. This paper is quite thin at £90, but inside the description states that it is internally sized and has a durable vellum finish, which Strathmore says makes it suitable for both wet and dry mediums. The paper is a light cream colour that I'm not a huge fan of, but I have heard some good things about this journal, so if it's one you've tried then I'd love to hear about your experience with it, so just leave me a comment in the section below the video. This was another Amazon purchase and I paid £23.74. 
Keeping with paper again for this next item, but this time some loose sheets. This is a pack of 60 sheets of 100% cotton paper that I thought would be really good for painting some smaller watercolour paintings here on my channel. The paper is 230 grams in weight, 6 by 9 inches in size, and is white with a cold press surface. It also came with three free water brushes, all for the price of £12.98 on Amazon. And this would have been a really good price, but on opening the pack up, it turns out I was being pretty optimistic, as this paper felt really flimsy. Much thinner actually than the £90 Strathmore paper. It did have a cold press surface on one side, but the reverse side was smooth, almost shiny, so I couldn't help feeling a bit disappointed. I will use it, but maybe more for testing or swatching than finished paintings. Moving swiftly on then, and next we have a variety of different brushes to look at, and I'm really excited to show you one in particular. First though is this set of five ProArt Proline Plus brushes. These I bought after another artist recommended them, and for all five brushes I paid £22.30 from Amazon, which I think is really good. They are synthetic with beautiful teak handles, and are meant to have a lovely spring to them and hold paint well too. I especially like that there is a flat brush in this set, as the few flat brushes I currently have are really old and need replacing. The other four brushes are round and look to have a really nice point on them, which will be really great for painting the small details I like to include in my animal and botanical paintings. There is a size 1, a size 3, a size 5 and a size 7, and the flat brush is 3 eighths of an inch, so I'm looking forward to trying them all out. Next we have the brushes I got from Jackson's, and these were a bit more expensive but still cheaper than Amazon at the time of ordering. The first one is another flat brush by the company Silver Brush, and as you may know I absolutely love their paint brushes and have been using their round silver black velvet brushes for some time now. This flat brush is also a silver black velvet but is slightly larger than the Pro Art one at a half inch. It also has a shaped end which I think you can use to etch lines into your paintings or maybe even to remove masking fluid from your paper. It cost me £21, but I know it's good quality and will last me a long time. This next brush is a size 5 Da Vinci Maestro brush, and I have been wanting to try one of these for absolutely ages. It's a Series 35 brush and is known for holding a beautiful point as well as a lot of water, so it's very popular amongst the botanical artists, but would be perfect for anyone who wants precise, controlled brush strokes in their paintings, whatever the subject. It cost me £23. Now, if I was excited to show you that brush, I am doubly excited for this next one. This next brush would not normally be something I would even look at, much less buy, due to the £67 price tag. But after a series of events that resulted in me selling an original piece of artwork, I decided to treat myself and buy something I wouldn't normally. So here it is. This is another Da Vinci Maestro brush, but it's a size 8. And before you say anything, I only got the gift box version because the non-gift box version was out of stock, and the price was the same anyway. That said, the packaging is beautiful and makes it feel even more special, so I'm really looking forward to using it. And like all brushes, if you take care of them properly, it should last a very long time. Now on to the last of the brushes and a package that I've yet to open. It took a little while for this to arrive as it's been a hugely popular product and I've seen several artists reviewing them on YouTube which is how I first heard about them. So here we have a set of 10 premium bamboo brushes from UK based company Craftamo. And even before opening up the box I can see that a lot of love, care and attention has gone into making this product. This card shows us clearly what we are getting inside the box, which are brushes designed and built using eco-friendly and cruelty-free materials. 
And just look at these. I am really impressed and extremely excited. Let's get one of these out and take a closer look. This is the largest size 10 brush. It's so beautifully made and so light. And I love the shape of the bristles. They have a really nice point to them for details. And there's nine other brushes too, going down in size to the smallest, which is a triple zero. I really can't wait to use them, but I'm going to have to save that for another day as I've still got to show you the paints I've bought. I've got quite a few different paints to show you today and I'm going to start with these which are all Winsor & Newton professional watercolours from Jackson's. I bought these some time ago now. I think it was after I did my colour mixing purples video where I used Winsor & Newton's Cotman watercolours in tubes and I was thinking of doing a comparison video with the professional paints. I haven't gotten around to it just yet though and I don't know if that's something that you'd like to see, but Jackson's had a sale on at the time and being that I love these watercolours anyway, I went ahead and got them. The colours are the same as the colours in the 24 set of Cotman Chew paints, as far as I could get, and obviously any colours I already had, I didn't reorder. So to start with we have Alizarin Crimson, also French Ultramarine, also in a larger tube as I use them quite a lot, and then in the smaller 5mm size we have Windsor Lemon, Yellow Ochre, and Prussian Blue. Then in the next little box we have three more of the smaller tubes, starting with Cerulean Blue, Burnt Sienna, and Cadmium Red Deep. Then in the last box we have three more 5mm tubes, Lamp Black, because I like how this one granulates, Hooker's Green, and lastly, Permanent Rose. I'm not sure yet whether I'll make that comparison video or not, so just in case I won't be swatching these watercolours out today. Instead we're going to move on and unpack another Jackson's parcel that contains some quite different paints, and these I will be swatching out at the end of the video. Now when I first started painting watercolour, I liked my paints to be smooth and even, and I really struggled with pigments that tended to separate out or granulate. But as time has gone on and I have learnt more about watercolour and how different pigments mix and behave, I have become more interested in these granulating pigments. So when I started to see other artists on YouTube trying out Schmincke Horodam's new super granulating watercolour sets, I was really keen to try them out for myself. So I'm a bit late to the party, but I finally bought two of the five sets available. I've chosen the Tundra set on the left and the Forest set on the right, and each set costs £31 on Jackson's. For this you get five 5mm five tubes, which may sound a lot, but it was a lot cheaper than the £51 Amazon were charging. I'm thinking these super granulating watercolours would add interest to my backgrounds and maybe add texture to some of my animal paintings too. Before I swatch them out though, there's just one more new art supply that I've got to show you. And this was again inspired by watching other artists here on YouTube. This is Acrylic Gouache by Liquitex, and this is their 12 piece essential set and cost around £41 on Amazon, though you might be able to get it cheaper elsewhere. And rather than being in tubes like regular gouache or acrylic, these come in little 22ml bottles. My idea with these is to use them to paint a design on the cover of my Etcher sketchbook. And whilst I have acrylic and gouache separately, I've never tried acrylic gouache, 
which according to the packaging gives you all the qualities of a conventional gouache with the permanence and stability of acrylic. As much as I like the plain white cover of this sketchbook, it is starting to look a bit grubby, so I thought it'd be fun to try that out. I haven't quite finished the sketchbook yet though, and there's a part of me that feels I have to do that first, but we'll see. I'm going to use a page in my Etcher sketchbook now to swatch out these super granulating Schmincke watercolours, and I'm also going to use my new half inch silver black velvet flat brush to paint with. This is 100% cotton cold press paper, which should show up the granulation nicely. So I'm going to speed this up a bit now and I'll put each of the colours on the screen as I swatch them out and you can watch them along with some music. And I'll come back to you at the end with a few last thoughts and show you how the swatches have dried as I find it really fascinating. Okay, so before I show you how these dry, I'm just adding a drop of clean water or two to each of the swatches to try and disturb the drying pigment, as this really emphasises the effect. I'd love to know if you've tried any of these super granulating watercolours, and if so, which is your favourite? Or maybe you're not a fan of granulating paints, in which case let me know which of the art supplies you've seen today that you'd like me to try out most in a future video. So here are all the swatches fully dry now and I have to say I love the effects and I'm really inspired to try them out in a future video. I really hope you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up if you did and subscribe to my channel if you're seeing it for the first time. Thank you so much for watching, take care, stay safe, stay creative and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!